Hey everybody, how's it going? What I'm about to show you is the way that you implement my super comprehensive Shopify tagging code. Now, this new way of tagging your Shopify website uses customer events. So remember, the checkout area in your Shopify site, if you have that, that's not working. So remove that code and tag your Shopify site using this new way. So I do have another video that shows how to do this kind of minimally, properly with just GA4 and GTM and Google Ads conversion tracking. Of course, there is enhanced conversions in there too and GA4 enhanced e-commerce. But with this way, check this out, there's a lot more. Let's go over to Google Tag Manager and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, let's create an account. Test account for video tutorial. Okay, enter your account name, enter your container name as well. Web, in this case, create. Accept the terms, yes. Okay, check this out. If we go to admin and you import this mega container that I'm showing you, let's go to import, choose container file, and then just leave it on overwrite. Let it do its thing for a minute. Click on add to workspace. And you'll see that all of these things that are included here give you a huge range of flexibility. You've got Curteo, Curteo, whatever you call it, Facebook. And this is, again, full funnel tagging. Curtail, Facebook, GA4, Google Ads, conversion tracking, dynamic retargeting, Hotjar, LinkedIn, Microsoft, so that's Bing, Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok, Twitter, X. So that's a lot of stuff. Now I also have the consent mode version of this, which of course uses a pre-configured container to you know, use a consent banner and determine whether somebody consents to cookies or not. And depending on that, these tags will fire accordingly. So it's all kind of set up for you. You don't need to kind of hire anybody to do that work. Uh, I can show you that container as well. Actually, I think I have that one set up. Let's have a look. Okay, I'll have to create it. So create an account, consent mode, mode container, pardon the noise, somebody's doing construction in my neighborhood. Okay, check this out. So now if we go to admin and import the consent mode container, you can see everything that you saw before but with Inzuzo consent mode applied. Okay, click on overwrite. Give it some time. Tags. You can see here, I've got and logic tags. You don't need to do it for GA4 because that's kind of baked into consent mode version two. But this and logic implies that um, certain events need to happen on the site and the user needs to con consent to those actions happening on the site, All right? So not only do you need to ask for consent on the tags that load when the page loads or when the website loads, but there are tags that happen along the way and you have to kind of catch those as well, just in case the user jumps in, you know, on the product page instead of going to the home page first. So this is all nicely configured in the variable section. Oh, actually, here's your Enzuzo cookie manager. You would just replace this 
with your specific Enzuzo um, script URL. Super easy, and then you're all done. You're configured at that point. I've given you instructions for this. Look out for those in the downloadable package. But for the purpose of this demo, I'm gonna show you how to implement this non-consent mode, huge GTM container in your Shopify site. To start, I'm gonna click on this GTM ID. I'm gonna grab the GTM ID. I'm gonna then go to, right, you can see I'm in my Shopify site. I'm gonna to go to online store. Yep, I'm here. So click on these three dots, click on edit code. Right, look for theme.liquid. I'm in it already here. Theme.liquid is this file on the left. Okay, under the head, you're going to paste your GTM code snippet. So again, what I did was I clicked on this, I clicked on copy, and then under head in my theme.liquid, I pasted the code snippet. Okay, that's sort of step one in the tagging process. Now, step two is we scroll down here uh, on, the, on the left here, and we look for snippets. We click on add a new snippet, and then let's call it data layer. Click on done. Okay. In the package you can download here, you can see that there is a snippet available for you. Control A, Control C, open that up, paste the snippet in here. Click on save, close it, go back to your theme.liquid where you pasted that Google Tag Manager code snippet. Now above it, you're going to use this curly brace, percent sign, you're going to type in render, and then you're going to go single quote, see, it adds two for you. And you're going to type in the name of the snippet, data-layer. You can tell we did it right because it's adding this arrow. You can click on it. There you go. So that's done. Click on Save. And now you can get out of this edit code area. I know it can be scary, but that's all you have to do. Now you can go to Settings. You have to add the Customer Events code now. Make sure you don't have any checkout code. Make sure if you have the Google and YouTube app installed that you've disabled GA4 and Google Ads conversion tracking. Because the whole point of this is that you want to manage and configure GA4 and all of your other tags as well. Like even if you have Facebook and Pinterest, you want to do all of that management in Google Tag Manager. Make sure all of those apps are disabled because all the management, like I said, is going to be done through GTM. So once you've made sure of that, go to customer events, add a custom pixel, and we're going to call it uh, GTM, GTM, all tags. I don't know. Call it whatever you like. Now, again, in that downloadable package, you're going to click on customer event Shopify, control A, control C, and then Control V. One thing you have to change in here is I've got a container ID variable. I've added a bunch of zeros there. That's a placeholder, of course. Go to your GTM. Click on this half here after GTM dash. So either do that and go Control C to copy just that part. Go back to Shopify. Replace those zeros. Okay. Should look like that, okay? Can I increase the, yeah, that's what it should look like. Whatever yours is, make it look like that for you. Okay, click save at the top. Make sure you click on connect, super important, this black connect button. Okay, you're done, good stuff. Now what you have to do is go over to Google Tag Manager. You're done as far as your Shopify site. Go over to Google Tag Manager and go to Variables and start replacing variables here. So you've got a GA4 measurement ID. 
you've got the one for TikTok, the one for Google Ads conversion ID, Google Ads conversion label, right? That's your Google Ads conversion tracking tag. Curtail, Facebook, Hotjar, LinkedIn, Microsoft, Pinterest, Snapchat, all that stuff. You want to replace those IDs with your ID. These are all just update this placeholders. But for the purpose of this tutorial, let's, um, right, they're all done a very similar way. Just wherever you get the IDs from, you're going to put them there. I'm going to show you in GA4. This is my test account. I'm going to go to admin at the bottom left. Then I'm going to go to data streams. Click on this one. Then I'm going to go measurement ID. I'm going to click on copy. I'm going to go into GA4 and I'm going to, right, you can see here, this is this variable g dash replace. Of course, I'm going to do a bunch of replacements here. So that's my ID. Put your ID in there, not mine. Do the same for your Google Ads conversion ID and your Google Ads conversion label for your specific purchase conversion action, let's say. Okay, and uh, for any of these other ones you want to activate too, you will find, you can see all the ones that say update this. In their respective platforms, you will find the IDs. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and just publish this. But we're done. That's it. You know, as far as GA4 goes. I'm going to show you now what the data layer looks like and how you can kind of debug things. Because this is sandboxed, you can't really use the GTM debugger in the customer events area. So once you get to the checkout, the GTM debugger does break. Shopify has their own debugger. It's pretty good, but I, I made my own. That kind of outputs to the console. So we can go to our site here. Let's, let's do a preview. Online store. Click on this eyeball. There's the store. Okay, if you go, if you click on white, a white space area here, click on inspect, click on console, then you can just watch the data layer come to life. Let's click on test product or whatever one of your product. There you go. We got a view item data layer event. View item. You can see e-commerce. There's these are the various data layer um, arrays. Kind of that I'm pushing for every platform. So when you use the app, you don't really have this kind of functionality. The various apps for these platforms, you don't really have dynamic retargeting functionality. That's an extra kind of step for when you want to do uh, retargeting. Right here is the TikTok items array, perfectly formatted for TikTok. I wonder if I can increase this. Yeah. Uh, content arrays. Curtail basket, e-commerce for GA4. Look at all that good stuff. Pinterest items array, right? It's all formatted properly. Oops. Oh boy. Okay, that's good like that. Now you can see here at console, I'm gonna just click around. I'll show you the uh, events that fire. Add to cart, the add to cart event fires for every platform. Let's go to view cart, view cart fires every platform again. Okay. Now, once we head into checkout, that's where we see the customer events section. This is that new sandboxed Shopify section. No checkout anymore in terms of the additional scripts area. That's totally deprecated. Checkout. Okay. See, in a sandbox environment, it says it can't show stuff, but you can sh you can see what I've been I'm outputting here. Check this out. Usually in this area too, people complain about this kind of WPM ugly sandboxed URL that Shopify um, uh, uses for this customer events section. You can see here I've replaced that with page location, so the the actual URL. You can see there it is here and there it is here. It's being echoed properly. Add shipping info, right? And you can you can verify that too by going to network and uh, here we go. 
whoops, I gotta enter this code. Eight three seven six five eight. Yeah. Okay, perfect. I want to show you that it's actually replacing the URL. It's not showing those WPM URLs. Add shipping info. This is the event. There's the value. Okay. There's the product ID. And there's the location. We don't see an ugly URL here. So in your reports and everything, let's say you're creating a data studio or a looker dashboard, you're going to see proper URLs in GA4 proper URLs. Okay. So that looks good. Check out as a guest. Just want to show you that this is working. Inspect. Console, and shipping info. Again, everything is fired. And check this. So here's the customer information. Address. There's my. This is all my information. Email. There's my email hashed. Phone number. That will be there when the phone number is there. You can see when I complete order. Okay. You got there's a purchase array, and enhanced conversions is fully set up. You've got an e-commerce array here with every other array for all the various platforms and customer data that we're passing. This is first party data for all the various platforms. Okay, hopefully you get something out of this. This is a super compre comprehensive Shopify pack and um, I haven't seen too many of these out there. In terms of your ability to kind of download it, use it and customize it. The code is yours once you um, once you have it in your possession. Okay, there you go. Again, lots of stuff here. If you were to do all of this in the Shopify platform, your site would be kind of bloated with all sorts of different apps. It would be difficult to track. The fact that you have this kind of tagging management platform here, Google Tag Manager, it makes things very easy to manage. Okay. Sounds like a no brainer, but uh, trust me, I've seen a lot of Shopify stores and a lot of them, it's difficult to keep track of what's there. Everything here is paused. All you got to do is unpause it. And like I said, add your, you know, respective ID to each platform. If you have the platform, if not, leave it paused. You might want it later on, but the data layer is set up exactly to how each platform requires the data layer to be. This took me a long, long time. I had to really kind of, um, you know, get obsessed with each company's documentation, <laughs> but um, there it is. It's for you. Have a good one. And uh, let me know if you have questions.